Across the alternate history community, thousands of different questions on what if something went differently have been asked, some questions being more popular than others. But if there was one what if that has been asked the most, it would undoubtedly be what if the Central Powers won the First World War. This what if is probably the most pondered and possibly the most overrated question on the AHC. Last year, I even made an attempt to answer the question in the form of a series with limited success. Many people have often turned the scenario into entire stories, books, and the most popular option, mods on the infamous game Hearts of Iron 4. In fact, it'll be a Hoi form mod that'll be the subject of this video. Introducing Kaiserreich, an alternate history mod that imagines a world in which, you guessed it, the Germans and the Central Powers won World War I. Kaiserreich is undoubtedly the Central Powers victory scenario to end all Central Powers victory scenarios, and is by far one of the most well-known alternate histories across the community. But before we get into it, for those of you who don't know what Hearts of Iron 4 is, it's an alt-history strategy game. That's it. Without wasting any time, let's look through the timeline of the Kaiserreich world. The war begins with an Austrian guy getting shot in Sarajevo and escalates into a conflict in the same way it does in our timeline. One of the key changes where this timeline diverges from ours is when some heated debates begin to spring up in the German government as to whether or not to resume unrestricted submarine warfare. The Germans and the Kaiser, not wanting to potentially trigger the US into joining the war, eventually decide not to, preventing them from making one of the gravest military mistakes they made in our universe. Because of this, the United States continues down a path of deep isolationism as President Wilson declares that US intervention in the war would be catastrophic and would waste thousands of men. This decision totally wasn't encouraged by the German expat population of the US. The effects of this decision begins to truly show by 1917, when the French troops on the Western Front begin to mutiny against their commanders, delaying Entente progress and giving the Germans some recovery time. It's also at this point that the Russian supply on the Eastern Front begins to run dry, causing most Russian progress to come grinding to a halt. What follows as a result of this is a Russian peasant uprising which spills over into a Bolshevik rebellion, and finally, a full-on civil war between the Russian Whites and Lenin's Red Army. The Germans and Austrians exploit this weakness, and quickly have the Treaty of Breslatovs signed, carving new puppet states out of Western Russian territory. With the Russians now silenced, Austro-Hungary turns most of their attention towards Italy, eventually pushing the Italian army out of the northeast. Meanwhile in the Middle East, the British and the Arabs manage to kick the Ottomans out of the Levant region. This is probably one of the biggest victories by the British in the war before things begin to go south. In December of 1917, a British submarine accidentally torpedoes and sinks an American cargo ship. This angers the US government, crushing all Entente hopes for American intervention. From this point on, everything on the Western Front goes to hell in a handbasket. The new Entente Spring Offensive fails miserably, and the German army begins their own massive offensive soon after. By early 1919, the Germans are closing in on Paris, as the remnants of the British army are evacuated back from the mainland. Does this sound familiar? Back in Russia, the Tsar and his family are executed by Bolshevik soldiers, dealing a large blow to white morale. Not long after, in the summer of 1918, Lenin is successfully assassinated. With the Red Army's ringleader now dead, the white government begins to see a divide between Democrats under Kolchak, who wanted Russia to be a republic, and the nationalists under Kornilov, who wanted Russia to be an authoritarian militarist state. Despite the divide, both agreed to work together to defeat the common Red Enemy. Eventually, in spring 1919, the war turns in favor of the whites, and soon, the Germans begin making under-the-table deals with the Russian nationalists in order to make sure the communists were crushed. Eventually, they are, with the White Army finally marching on Moscow. Over in Western Europe, a second wave of protests and mutinies break out across France, eventually causing the French army to surrender with an armistice signed in October of 1919, and the German army marching victoriously through Paris. In November, the Treaty of Versailles is signed between the Germans and the French, in which the French are forced to make land concessions and pay reparations to the Germans. Angry and demoralized, the French people quickly blame the government for all the nation's problems, and soon a civil war begins between the Republicans and a brand new faction called the Syndicalists. The Syndicalists eventually win, and the Commune of France is declared in 1920, sending the French Republican government into exile in North Africa.
Italy also surrenders to the Central Powers around this time, and suffers a similar fate, eventually breaking apart into many different smaller nations. The UK, however, doesn't back down, and spends another two years fighting naval battles with the Germans. These battles end up proving futile, as the UK eventually backs down in 1921, and a peace with honour is declared, ending the war in a Central Powers victory. Germany is now the undisputed superpower of Europe. Britain is forced to give up several overseas colonies to the Germans, and the Germans also unite their new Central African colonies into one super colony known as Middle Africa. Middle Europa is also founded in Europe as a political union for Germany to cement their claim over the continent. Meanwhile, the pound plummets, and soon many Brits begin struggling to afford basic necessities. Across what's left of the British Empire, many people begin to truly see the truth behind their colonial oppressors and begin to rise up. In no time, Ireland soon gains independence, and in India, many revolts break out. Waves of anti-war and anti-government protests even break out in Britain, and, inspired by the revolution in France, new left-wing factions begin to rise up. In order to quell these rebellions, the British government begins what you could call a purge of Labour Party MPs. All of this comes to a climax after a workers' strike at a port in Wales turns bloody, with soldiers opening fire. This leads to a syndicalist revolution in Britain in 1924, which of course boils over into a civil war. With the breakout of this war, the British royal family and many other British loyalists flee to Canada, while the typically loyalist Northern Ireland, not wanting to be caught up in this mess, reluctantly joins the Republic of Ireland, reunifying the island. The last loyalist forces are defeated and soon the Union of Britain is declared. The effects of this British revolution are felt globally. The British Empire goes into crisis mode. Canada becomes the empire's new base. New Zealand and Australia unites. So do the Caribbean colonies. India breaks apart. Egypt declares independence. And Germany swallows up more African colonies. In fact, speaking of Germany, the new supremacy that the empire inherits isn't very stable. In less than five years after the war, they are already surrounded by a syndicalist bloc in the West and a newly reunited yet unstable Russia. And Europe is not the only place where this leftist syndicalism begins to become more mainstream. The US doesn't even participate in the war, yet they still pay the price for it. By staying isolationist, they basically allow the German Empire to overtake them in almost all fields. In no time, the nation begins to feel the economic backlash. The economy then takes a nosedive during the stock market crash, which in this universe happens early in 1925. Due to the average American becoming poorer and poorer, new left-wing movements spring up around the Rust Belt inspired by the syndicalism of Western Europe. In response to this, various anti-socialist and anti-leftist groups begin to rally behind Huey Long, a Louisiana politician who is beginning to gain traction and began his Every Man a King campaign. The actual Huey Long in our world did in fact lead a campaign under this slogan, but he got a bullet lodged in his chest before he could do anything big. In this universe, his campaign turns into a new political party. Same with the syndicalists. The 1936 elections roll around, things get messy, people lose and take it personally, and a second American civil war breaks out, with the syndicalists up north forming the combined syndicates of America, the anti-socialists down south forming the American Union state, and the US government being taken over by a military dictatorship under General MacArthur. On top of this, New England secedes in order to stay out of the war, and the Pacific States of America break free with the intention of bringing democracy back to the nation. Elsewhere, the rest of the world isn't looking much better. The Union of Britain goes through a purge known as the Red Terror, a leftist uprising takes place in Argentina, the Qing Dynasty still managed to survive and China goes through an endless warlord period which is being egged on by the Germans and the Japanese, Genghis Khan 2.0 springs up in Mongolia, and the 1930s becomes a time where Germany also begins to face their fair share of economic downturn. The Austro-Hungarian and Ottoman empires also manage to stay afloat after the war, but still suffer from internal political issues. The game itself starts in 1936, a time when America is in political turmoil, a second Welt Creek seems imminent, and the British and French governments in exile continue to prepare to take back their respective homelands. From this point on, the timeline changes based on what you decide should happen next. Thus, I highly encourage you to go and play the actual Kaiserreich mod for yourself in order to see how the timeline, at least for you, continues.
Thank you all for watching, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me in the comments what other alternate history books, movies, or TV shows I should cover for future episodes. See ya!